Hello, hello, welcome to Quackalope, and today we're going to be diving into three different games, all of which are big enough to fit into my pocket if I would like them to. We're going to be diving into 524 Labs Mintworks series with Mintworks, Mint Delivery, and Mint Cooperative, which is live right now on Kickstarter. So the tin that I have here is actually the prototype version. We're going to be doing two different things in this video. First, I'm going to be diving into a little bit of the story behind the Mintworks world. So touching on the lore, the flavor text, what's actually going on in each one of these games and possibly a little sneak peek into some of the games that are still set to come down the line. And secondly, I'm going to be touching in on what each one of these games does and what it does really well. Mint Cooperative, like I said, is live now on Kickstarter, but you can also pick up copies of Mint Delivery and Mint Works for a better deal than almost any other time throughout the year. Along with that, most of these games are available either online at 524 Labs or more usually than not at a local board game store near your town. So if any of these games strike your fancy and it happens to be past the point where the Kickstarter is no longer active, these games will be readily available both online and in retail. So keep your eyes out. Let's go ahead and start with the classic, Mintworks, the game that sort of, uh, I guess, set the foundation for it all. Mintworks is a pocket-sized worker placement game, and honestly, that description sums it up fairly well. It is a tight, self-contained, 10 to 15 minute, one to four player worker placement game for all of you who enjoy that style of game. It provides just enough depth and complexity to keep people who are uh, heavy gamers, I would consider myself a heavy gamer, interested in what's going on on the board and satisfied with that 10 to 15 minutes worth of gameplay, while also being one of the best introductory games in the genre of worker placement. Now you may be asking, what is a worker placement style game? Well, that's where you have a series of options and a limited number of workers or meeples or tokens. In this case, a limited number of mints, your resource that you can spend. You'll use that limited resource to take actions. Usually those actions are limited, so it's first come, first serve, or it becomes more expensive to utilize those locations down the road. So throughout a worker placement game, you're using a limited resource to take actions that have usually one of two effects, either end game scoring, so victory points, the way you win the game, or immediate actions that help you get your system more efficient, generate you more resources, give you more workers, uh, disrupt the play of the other players around the table. There's usually a little bit of back and forth there as you try to figure out the different choices you can make to be as efficient as possible, and that will result in you typically winning the game. Now I told you I'd touch in on the lore, and I'll go ahead and start opening this up while I talk a little bit about what this game is all about. Mintworks is a game about the creator of a special mint, a formula that had never been discovered before. Mortimer M. Works took a risk on the mint business, and he struck gold, almost literally. The mints became so popular that in the town or the community that he was a part of, they almost became a resource of their own, and that's where this game comes in. In Mintworks, you will be building a community, a town, by taking actions, going to different zones here on the table, and slowly building up and gaining resources. You can have a mine, you can get a truck, you can have a windmill, you can design a lotto, have a vault for some extra victory points, construct a museum, have a gallery. You're designing and growing the community where the Mintworks factory is located. And what are you using as the resource? Well, the mints themselves. You see, these mints became so popular that they kind of constructed or built an entire town around their creation. But what's popular can't stay in a localized town for too long, and that's where mint delivery comes in. See, Mortimer had to figure out a way to expand the business, so he designed new mints, started delivering mints to the local communities and towns around him. He designed new and different mints, delivering to Cinnamon Oaks and Spearmint Falls in this little tight game, Mint Delivery. Now, if you're not familiar with what a delivery game is, or a pick up and deliver game, then I'll go ahead and tell you a little bit about what Mint Delivery is and what it does really well. Mint Delivery is a pocket-sized pick up and deliver game. 
Now, a pick up and deliver game is one where you're trying to uh, gather a certain amount of resources, find the most efficient pathway or chain of events in order to typically fulfill contracts. Imagine that a town, you know, three or four blocks away, requested three spearmint mints. And there was another town two or three blocks away that were able to provide three spearmint mints. Well, the puzzle would be, how do you path your way over, pick up the spearmint mints, put them on your truck, and path your way back over to Cinnamon Falls in order to drop them off, uh, turn in that contract, and gain victory points. The challenge of the game all comes into other people driving around the board trying to uh, mess with your delivery system. You see, other people will be trying to accomplish different contracts, trying to fulfill deliveries, picking up the mints that you want, and even taking routes and blocking off some sections of the road that maybe you wanted to travel on. For me, the mint delivery game is a rewarding little pick up and deliver game. I think it's a good way to introduce someone to the concept of pick up and delivery, but I do recommend that if you're going to play mint delivery, try to get to the advanced rules as quickly as possible. The lighter rules are the structure of a pick up and deliver game. And that's fun and that's good and it's a good way to learn how the game works. But when you can mix in a little bit more chaos, have some road closures, have some different types of contracts, the game becomes that much more interesting. It's a tight 15 to 30 minutes and it plays one through five players. So we just left off with Mortimer M. Orcs expanding his empire, creating new types of mints. We have cinnamon and spearmint and the, you know, classic peppermint still here in the tin, and starting to deliver them or truck them to the neighboring communities. Let's see where we branch out to. We have Peppermint Pines, Freshman Falls, Cinnamon Center, various different warehouses where you'll be picking up the mints that are ready for delivery as the uh, operation expands. And we have various different contracts here. These are what you're going to try to be accomplishing or delivering throughout the course of the game. However, a problem starts to arise. With any empire or any successful business, you're always going to have competition. And other companies weren't going to allow the mint empire to go unchallenged. And so they start stepping into the territory, designing or creating their own versions of this popular mint. There's a game down the line that may or may not touch on the idea of mint control. These other companies that are designing and challenging the empire that Mortimer has built. And along with that, these companies are unregulated to some degree, designing and crafting and experimenting with the idea of the mint creation, trying to perfect it or creating other confectionaries with the same mint core, the mint design. One of these companies ends up designing something a little bit more nefarious, Mintomium, a kryptonite-like mint substance that transforms human DNA. And that's where Mint Cooperative starts to settle in. People have started to take advantage of this biologically altering substance, and we see superhuman beings entering the playing field. And so Mortimer has to figure out a solution. There are villains, ne'er-do-wells, rising up and terrorizing places like Spearmint Springs and the Cinnamon Center. The villains compound into a group, forming the LOH, the League of Halitosis. And Mortimer decides something has to be done. He cannot let Spearmint Springs or the Cinnamon Center or Peppermint Pines continue to be terrorized by the League of Halitosis. And so he pulls together his own cast of superheroes. Mortimer forms the Mint Cooperative. Now, Mint Cooperative is the newest game in the Mint series lineup. And it is exactly what the title says. Just like Mint Works and Mint Delivery, Mint Cooperative is a pocket-sized, cooperative game. Now, a cooperative game is one where you usually have a puzzle or a combined mission you're trying to solve. You're working together as a team to do your best to, in this case, control the spread of fear and chaos across the different cities. You're trying to sweep in and prevent things from kind of falling apart, facing off against various supervillains. Now, you can play this one through four in about 15 to 30 minutes, it's, like the others, a good way to introduce people to the cooperative genre of gaming. But along with that, if you like working together as a team, if you like solving a puzzle as a family or a unit, and you're not as interested in a winner-take-all or some of the uh, sort of player interaction that can happen with a competitive game, 
Mink Cooperative could be a perfect game for you to slide into your pocket, bring with you on a trip or out to dinner, have something for you and your family to do or you and your friends to do when you're looking for a good size cooperative game to get to the table. I'm gonna go ahead and start dumping this out and I'll tell you a little bit about how this game plays. Like I said, the communities that Mortimer had started delivering his product to started to be infested with villains. Here on these cards, we have Gingivitis, we have Nicotine, and we have Gorillic. And they will start populating or terrorizing these different cities. And your job, as these little meeples, is to swoop around the city, preventing chaos from breaking out, reducing the amount of fear that's happening, and trying to survive three different waves of mayhem brought on by the LOH. If you're successful in overcoming and preventing fear to take hold, then you'll win the game. And like I said, it's a really neat pocket-sized cooperative game. So if cooperative games are your style, you might want to give this one a little bit of a closer look. And right on the back here, the game that I was referencing just a little bit early, we have a tiny little preview for Mint Control. A game all about these different peppermint factories, these candy confectionaries, designing and trying to take a little bit of the market from Mortimer. And on the back here, it says sneak peek. Wait a second, this isn't supposed to be here. Coming to Kickstarter in 2020. So keep your eyes out. This has been an overview of 524 Labs Mint lineup. Their mint tin sized games. I hope you've learned some things about these games that you didn't know before, and I've encouraged you to give them a little bit of a closer look. If you've made it to this point in the video, leave a comment in the comment section down below, letting me know which one of these titles interests you the most and why. Along with that, don't forget to like and subscribe. We put out new videos every single week with gameplay, unboxings, full reviews, documentary videos, flavor text, and a weird mix just like this video was. You joining the community here lets publishers know that you like what we're doing here and that you'd like to see more of it. It allows us to continue producing high quality videos as quickly as we possibly can. Whatever you do though, remember to do the important thing, get out and play some games. We'll see you next time. Thank you.